Hey there, this is Mr. H. This is one of the videos in my six-step series on how to solve problems. This one has to do with angular momentum. Before we get started, you'll want to be familiar with the common moments of inertia. If you need to, take a screenshot of this page. A point object can have angular momentum so long that it has a linear momentum off-center to a pivot or axis of rotation. Notice this first example has no ability to twist the object, but this second example would have the ability to twist or rotate that object. We say that it has angular momentum r times m times v. It's important to know that this is a cross product of r and mv, which means you only multiply the components of these two vectors that are perpendicular to each other. For a rigid shape, we say it has angular momentum L equals I omega, where L is angular momentum, I is moment of inertia, and omega is angular velocity. You're going to want to become familiar with your equation sheets and where to find the equations for angular momentum and conservation of angular momentum. And as always, we're going to be using a six-step strategy, so take note of these steps. Let's do an example problem. A plate of mass m and radius r spin with an initial angular velocity omega i, just before a clothespin snaps to the edge. The clothespin can be considered a point mass m at radius r, and together they have final velocity omega f. Determine an expression for the mass of the clothespin m in terms of the other fundamental constants. Step 1 is to identify the question. They asked for mass so we write the letter M with a question mark. Step two is to draw a picture. In this case, the diagram is already there. Step three is to apply the law of conservation of angular momentum. Step three always looks like this for momentum problems, angular momentum problems. Step four, identify things that have angular momentum. In the initial moment, we had just the disk spinning. So we're going to write I omega for just the disk. And then the final situation, both of them are spinning together. So you can choose to write two different terms independently, or you can combine them. I chose to put them together as I f and omega f. But then during step five, I realized, um, step five is to substitute formulas. Step five, I realized that the thing that we're solving for is only existing in the moment of inertia of just the clothespin. So I separated those two. Um, and there's the little m that we have to solve for. Now the disk had moment of inertia 1 half mr squared. So those were plugged in for the disk terms. But then the point mass of the clothespin has moment of inertia just mr squared. You can get those from your moment of inertia tables. Step 6 is to solve for the unknown. So we're going to try to isolate little m here. Notice there's an r squared in every term, so we can divide everything by r squared and simplify it down to this line. And then once you're there, you might want to subtract the 1 half m omega final to get this term alone on the right-hand side. And then the last step you'll do is to divide by omega final to get m isolated. And there's your final expression. A child decides to throw a handful of chocolate onto a door, causing it to stick to the door and swing with an angular velocity final. Um, sometime later, after, after the door is clean, that same child throws another handful of chocolate ice cream, this time right smack dab in the middle of the door. And we want to compare those two final angular momentums, both A and B. All right, so step one, read and understand the question. We've got a picture and a question. Uh, step two, draw a picture. So we've got a picture, sorry. Step three, apply the law of conservation of angular momentum. Looks like, honestly, it looks like it says Eli Elf, and that's an easy way to remember it. Um, so we always write this down. Step three always looks the same. Um, identify, for step four, identify the forms of momentum that you have. In the very first beginning situation here, 
the door's motionless, but the chocolate has momentum. Um, and because it's off-center from this pivot, we say that it has angular momentum, r times m times v. Now in the final picture, both the door and the chocolate are kind of swinging around this pivot point, so they both have angular momentum together. Um, and we have a formula I omega final. The, the door, we'll call it a rod, because that's what it looks like from a bird's eye view. And the, the chocolate, we can still kind of do the same formula, RMV. However, let's substitute for V, R omega, so we're only dealing with omegas. All right, so now let's substitute the formula for a rod, one-third ml squared. And this, uh, a point mass is kind of like ml squared, just like a hoop is. So this becomes simplified here. And then we're solving for omega final. The m's look like they cancel, and one of the l's do too. And then on this side, we have 3 fourths initial velocity divided by l. And that was for the case where the chocolate was at the very edge. Now let's look at the second case later on when we decided to throw more chocolate ice cream. Um, this one, again, it hit right in the middle of the door. So do we think that's going to have a greater angular velocity or a lesser angular velocity? Think about that for a second. Well, let's look at the steps. Step one, identify that they're looking for angular velocity. Step two, draw a picture. Step three... Draw the, or apply the law of conservation of angular momentum. Step four, identify stuff that has momentum. Um, same deal as before, the chocolate had velocity off-center to a pivot, so it's going to have angular momentum, RMV. Afterwards, the, the door, we'll call it a rod again, from the vantage point we're looking at, so the rod has a moment of inertia and an angular velocity final, and same with the chocolate. Um, now this time, unlike before, it was at a distance L, and now it's at a distance L over 2. So just be careful there for the next line when you're substituting in for moment of inertia of the rod and of the chocolate, the point mass. Um, this whole entire... Um, parentheses right here can be considered one moment of inertia of this entire object all stuck together. If you notice, we could just add them up and it's I times omega final there. Um, and then M's cancel, one of the L's cancels, and you're left with 3 over 5 V over L. So 3 fifths compared to 3 fourths it appears that the original case where we hit the door right at the edge, we end up getting a greater final angular velocity. Now that kind of makes sense since we want to push a door further away from the pivot point to have a, a greater effect on twisting it. Next question. A ball of clay is thrown onto a disc, and it sticks to the disc, causing it to rotate with a final angular velocity. Derive an expression for the final angular velocity of the disc with a piece of clay stuck to it, um, and do so in terms of other constants, capital R, small r, that's where it collided, uh, initial velocity v, mass of disc, and mass of clay. All right, so they want omega final. So step one is to identify the question. Omega final equals question mark. Step two, draw a picture. So we got a picture. Step three, apply the law of conservation of angular momentum. Eli Elf, right there. Then we look for things that had angular momentum initially. It looks like we had... Um, the clay has motion, and it's off-center to the axis. So the, the point mass of the clay has angular momentum, RMV.
but the disc isn't moving yet, so there's no other additional initial angular momentum. It's just RMV. Um, but afterwards, we can say that those two items together move with an angular velocity final. So you may have noticed in the last problem we combined the two objects as one large value for i. We'll do that here again, and we'll have moment of inertia of a disk plus moment of inertia of a point object, which is just mr squared. So uh, moment of inertia for a disk is one half mr squared. We'll make sure to put a subscript d for the disk. And then the point mass right here for the clay. Notice we're using subscript C for mass clay. We can't get those two M's confused, so that's why we have subscripts. Uh, same subscript over here, so for algebra purposes. And then we're going to divide by this term to solve for omega final. And then we get this delightful expression for the final angular momentum of the disk that has clay stuck to it. Now, in regular AP, there's, they're asking you more questions, um, not necessarily numerical, but to have you think of how one thing affects the other. So I want you to take a moment and, and think about where that landed. What if it had landed further out, like a greater greater value for little r there, um, and think about how the location of little r would affect the final angular velocity. Now we have this equation now that we created that would support answers, but I also want you to kind of use your intuition too. If you think we're going to spin faster if we're further out, kind of like the door, maybe if r gets larger angular momentum final gets larger. Let's see what that looks like. So if we approached the distance capital R, that's the edge of the disk, that would be like the this little r turned into big R, and so did this one. And then we end up with this expression kind of as a maximum, because we can't get further out than that. But if we went the other way and we approached zero with little r, Notice the numerator goes to zero, and that's the smallest amount of angular velocity you could have. All right, one more question. Um, there was an animation earlier kind of similar to this. If we throw a baseball and then it hits a, one of these blades of a uh, windmill, then how does that affect the final angular velocity of the windmill. Now in this case, we're having the baseball stop moving forward completely. So all of its angular momentum should be converted over into the fan blade spinning because afterwards it's going to drop straight down and notice there's no component of velocity that's off center. It's directly below the center of this. Um, so let's see what it looks like if we solve for the angular velocity of the, the windmill blades. Why don't you give this one a try first, pause the video, see what happens, and then press play again when you think you might need some help or to confirm your answer. All right, so as always, we do step one. We write the question, omega final, question mark. And then step two, draw your picture. You probably just used the picture that was available. Step 3, we write this line for step 3 every time. Step 4, we see what had momentum, angular momentum. First, the baseball did, RMV. Uh, and then afterwards, the baseball had none. It was just the fan blades. Um, so I omega final for this shape. Now, we have to be careful with this shape because it's like a rod and there's four of them. So I'm going to multiply the... Moment of inertia of a rod by 4. That's where this number 4 comes in. Moment of inertia of a rod on its end would be 1 third mr squared. And I'm just using the letter L for length of these blades. And then we just do some algebra and we get 3 fourths um, mass of the baseball, initial velocity of the baseball, divided by mass of each rod, length of each rod. As always, thank you for watching and good luck.